<laughs> thank you very much, and I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation. It's my pleasure to be here. So it is a sort of a survey talk, and I uh, would like to mention a few problems uh, with related results, uh, which I think uh, interesting. So there are a lot have been done in the last several years, and and now we have still a few old problems remaining, and also there's the vast amount of new problems arising because of thanks to the uh, recent progresses. So I just want to share a few of these, which I think quite uh, interesting. Uh, yes, so I will uh, talk about matrices with uh, IID entries, just for simplicity. Uh, and what, how does it things work? Which one is a laser? Oh, OK, thank you. So uh, we consider uh, three random, well, three models or two models of random matrices. One is just emission with complex entries, uh, symmetric with ring entries. And we also consider an IID model when there's no symmetry. We just have n square IID entries. And uh, we will uh, assume that the uh, entries have normal mean and variances, 0 and 1. In many theorems, we will need some extra decay, tail decay condition. I will just ignore them, and that they are technical, but you can check the papers. Uh, uh, yeah, so the example to keep in mind for the Gaussian is the GUE, the GOE for emission and symmetric, and the Ginebra for, for the IID model. And another one, which is my favorite, is the Bernoulli. Uh, matrices when the entries are just plus minus one with probability half. Okay. Yeah, so the big picture that I sort of think of is the following. So for the Gaussian models, one can compute many statistics, uh, either global or local, using direct computations, which by no means easy, but those are known for a long time. And we expect the statistic to hold for more general models, which I put all theorems of, or conjecture of this type just under the title of universality, which is not only specif specified to any parameters, but it's just a general phenomenon. Now, when we want to go from the Gaussian model to the general model, my experience is that the Bernoulli seems a very good toy representative the toy model. So if you can do this, it's very likely you can do it for almost any interesting uh, models, which is just experience. But this is also something very convenient to work with. It's plus minus one bit. Uh, it's open the way for, for instance, combinatorics to come in at certain point. So, uh, so, yeah, so with this in mind, I will present uh, many results and conjecture restricted to Bernoulli, but the understanding is that uh, it will hold in much more general setting. Now, there will be a many, many other models I could not discuss, or just barely touched. Uh, many of them are here. And we will need a survey on each of these models, and it will take all day. Uh, for instance, uh, well, I think the last, um, last night at the dinner, uh, Tom Spencer and, uh, and I and uh, and Sasha Sodin just talk about random regular graph, and that takes the whole dinner. So <laughs> uh, I apologize that there will be many results and, and, uh, and thought and conjecture concerning this will not be mentioned just because of the space of time. Uh, yeah, but it is very natural if we have a conjecture to the basic model, it is very natural to check that if they hold for any of these other models. Uh, <coughs> OK, so let me take a, a slow start, start the lunch, so do things slowly, uh, by starting with the semicircle law that I don't need to restate, uh, the Wigner law. That is for the emission and symmetric uh, um, matrices when we know that the eigenvalues are real. OK, so if we go to the IID case, the eigenvalues are not real. Most of them are complex, as we know. Uh, and the correspondence of the 
semicircle law is a, something called the circular law, uh, which say that, okay, now if we, the eigenvalue will be in the unit circle uh, uniformly. Now this one actually much harder than the semicircle law, uh, and it takes a long time to establish it starting, uh, Meta already very long time ago, uh, well, from his formula, he know that it should be true for complex Gaussian. Even for real Gaussian, you need a little proof. It was done by Elderman, and there are important development by Girko and Bai. Uh, and then there's some recent work up with uh, Tikhomirov, and Panzu, and Tao, and I. Uh, at the end, uh, we can establish this uh, with under, in, in the most general situation. The fun thing here is, as I mentioned, because this one, from the Girko and Bai um, work, it already seems clear that what is missing is something about the probability that the matrix get a value very close to zero, namely a problem about the least eigenvalue or least singular value. We want to bound it from below, uh, and uh, the critical component of the missing, actually we find out later, is come from additive combinatorics. Uh, something called the inverse theorem, which uh, again, 2007 is a nice year because I was here as an organizer for additive combinatorics and the whole year we talk about inverse theorem and, and finally we find an application which is not. It's uniform in the disk, right? Yes, it's uniform in the disk. Yeah, so it's just something called the inverse theorem for little wood Oxford type in the quality. Yes, yes, it's true for everything. It's true under only this assumption, means zero and variance one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, now the, in, the, in, this direct, in this direction recently, there are exciting work when you walk, walk with matrices with dependent entries. Things get much harder. Uh, and I can single out the single ring theorem by Guillaume, Krishnapu, and Zaituni uh, also with uh, with some lemma from Woodenson and the shining graph. Lemma is the is is uh, over simplification is the whole paper to verify a condition from the first paper, and uh, some work on elliptic law from Norm Morgan and Oruk. So elli elliptic law is something interesting that uh, that connect these two law together. Actually, these two can be seen that the extremo of the X spectrum, so you can have a family of matrices leading by some parameter, if the parameter is one, and you have this, the parameter is zero, you have this, and in between, it will go from the circle to the real life. By being an elliptic, it gets thinner and thinner, so that's the elliptic law. Uh, okay, so that's it's just about the global one. I think the main part of the talk will be the local uh, distribution. So the way, actually, I came into this business is uh, due to Peter right here. So every time I, well, I, I walk on random matrices for a long time, but from different problems. But every time I give a talk, so he say that, what can you say about the, the gap distribution, which appear, of course, from uh, the Riemann zeta root of Riemann zeta function? Now I can say, oh, I cannot say nothing. Uh, and after a while, about five years or six years, it gets very embarrassing. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so I try to look at, we try to look at. Uh, yeah, so the gap is just lambda i plus one minus lambda i. So we start, well, we try to understand it by, okay, what is the joy distribution of lambda i, lambda i plus one? If we can do this, and of course we can do the gap, now it's the joint distribution of the two things, so I go to the literature and see that what we know for such a thing. And I found this very surprising. Well, at that time it was very surprising to me. A result of Gustafsson that he said that you look at the distribution of individual eigenvalue with his Gaussian. And he also proved that for the joint distribution of any K eigenvalue, so two or three or five. Uh, and it was stunning for me at the time because I don't see where the central limit theorem come in here, right? So usually when you think about central limit theorem, you have some sum or some, something that look like a sum, and then you have central limit theorem. And this one had nothing look like a sum. Well, 
later on, I learned about determinant of processes and, uh, and uh, posting label with the theorem, which Gustafsson used, and, and then it, it become more natural. But at the first time I saw it, I said, wow, well, this, this is just stunning. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's local. It's for eigenvalue number, n over 2, for instance. Yes. Um, Yes, yes, and he used that and to uh, mm, yeah. So later on, Oruk uh, do it for GUE as well. Now here, there's no determinant theorem, so he has to do something else. Yeah, but uh, result both. Uh, yes, so uh, we go on and uh, and do um, yeah. So uh, we prove the something called the four moment theorem, which uh, the definition of of four moment is the following. We say that two random matrices match to order k if the first k moment are the same. So you look at the Gaussian, it would be 0, 1, 0, and 3. Right? So that, that is the four moment. And we say that if the four moment are the same, then the joint distribution of any k eigenvalues are the same, asymptotically, of course. Uh, and you can even take k to be some small power of n. Uh, not even constant. Uh, and there's some reason. There's extension on this front by Nolis and In and Tao and myself. And for instance, you can look at more general model, or you can look at the joy distribution of the eigenvalues and eigenvector as well. So it also. It is IID. It's not banded. It have to be full. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Except the symmetry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the open, obvious open question here is what about Bernoulli one? So Bernoulli match only to match the Gaussian only up to three moments. Right? So we have zero, one, zero. But the three is gone. I don't know what is the, the answer for this. So the easiest eigenvalue to look at is you look at the midden one when the mean is just zero. Then that means the middle eigenvalue is normal distribution even without normalization. So, so can we say anything about the individual uh, distribution of eigenvalues for just plus minus one matrix? Okay. okay, so the next topic is, of course, the topic is very close to the heart of this. Uh, workshop is to talk about correlation function. Uh, and so here's the, yeah, so the correlation function, usually I think of it as the measure because in the discrete case it's not really a function. Uh, so basically the basic question is uh, to examine the behavior of this measure with respect to some test function. Uh, actually coming from like yeah, I didn't have, or I don't have physics background, so it take me for a while to digest this definition because in the book it's usually defines the marginal in the marginal distribution, which is very hard to to think about. So I, I usually keep it in mind as follows. So the, the actually it's enough to look at indicator function as a test function, and if I look say look k equal to 1 and look at the indicator function then it's just uh, of some interval then the correlation function just give me the expectation of number of eigenvalues in that interval if i look at the indicator function of a box uh, then it will give me the expectation of number of pairs when one eigenvalue is the interval of first interval the eigen other eigenvalue is the second interval and so on and so forth so, so you can imagine what it gives. So it is useful as a quick application can show here. Well, it's useful in many ways, but uh, as to me, the, the best uh, illustration is that you can use it to compute the distribution of number of eigenvalues in a short interval. Because what you see here is, is here's the expectation, here's basically the second moment, and so on. <coughs> 
So in particular, you can compute the whole probability, which is something people like. So this is the, the whole probability is a probability that an interval doesn't have any eigenvalue. Uh, it was done by a, a group of uh, Japanese uh, mathematicians. And even more, you can compute the occup occup something called occupational probability. I take uh, the word from the dive book. Uh, so the probability that the interval have exactly k eigenvalues. So this kind of example come up in our textbook uh, uh, that uh, you see in, in, in the area. Uh, OK, so to, uh, um, yeah, so talk about localization. It's useful to localize this at some point u, the correlation function. So here's a standard definition. So we just talk about oscillation from u. Um, and then, uh, thanks to classical work by Gordon, Meta, Dyson, Tracy, Widom, uh, we know explicit uh, uh, formula for this correlation function in the Gaussian case. So here's a, this very nice that I put it here for the GUE. We know that the correlation function is uh, determinantal with, uh, with the psi kernel really pleasant to look at. Uh, OK, so now um, what are the conjecture? So in the, co in the Meta's book, he made two conjectures. Now if you look at these conjectures, it's, you have to interpret them somehow. It is, it's, it's uh, written in the language of the 60s. It's not so clear what, what it's supposed to mean. It seems like he suggests that, that you have universality with respect even in probability, convergence in probability, which is very strong. We, we, uh, we don't know at that level, actually. Um, now, uh, one uh, type of convergence we see uh, frequently in probability is uh, vague convergence, namely that uh, you take a test function, uh, take the integral, and let n go to infinity, then it have to converge to whatever we expect to the side kernel measure. That's not only the, um, the convergence uh, one can consider. So Erdős and Yao uh, introduce uh, another convergence, which take, well, I don't know a good way to name it. I can name it average vec convergence. Maybe you guys have some other names. Let me take this. Uh, and then uh, the trick is to, um, well, we don't stick to one number u, but we take an averaging over u in the short interval. And now take a, uh, the limit. OK. Um, yeah, so let me mention a few important work in this direction, starting with Johansson's work he proved. Uh, the uh, universality of correlation function for Gauss divisible uh, Hermitian matter complex uh, uh, matrix. So you take a random complex matrix and you get a portion of add a portion of Gaussian noise to it. And the the important thing is that the portion have to be uh, of order one. So uh, and and then uh, Johansson proved that this. Uh, is true. There is a very impressive uh, uh, sequence of papers leading by Dres and Ao and many uh, co-authors. I apologize if I forget some co-authors. It's a very long uh, sequence of paper and basically established the universality in the average sense for all models, even for models beyond this talk. They are more general models. So true. <coughs> and for the Hamilton matrices, so namely Hamilton squid uh, matrices with complex uh, variable, uh, there's a result of Tao and I and Edwish and Yao prove it in the vex sense. And here we prove it in the general term that we need only um, we need only mean zero and variance one. From the four moment theorem, we can conclude immediately that it is true if we have four moment assumption. But here you need only two moment assumption. Four moment. 
Okay, so the thing is left is the symmetric green case that which I know is true in the vague sense only with the four moment assumption now. <coughs> so the first question is, yeah, so what can we do for say symmetric Bernoulli matrices? So I give you a symmetric plus, mi plus minus one matrix and the question is, is it true that the correlation is universal in the convergence? So there's some good evidence that, that it should be true. Well, actually, in general, we all believe that's true. Uh, Edwards and Yao very recently proved universality for the gap. So if you look at a gap like this, then the distribution of this is universal. So it's a good indication that it should be true in general. Now, this may be, well, it, it may be a, a, a challenge. And, uh, and usually, when there are problems like this, I try to uh, motivate uh, maybe young researcher by uh, by hey, by giving some toy problem which probably easier to attack. Um, in this case, I want to mention the following toy problem with respect to just a whole probability. So uh, we know that the spectrum is between minus two and two. Let me take a tiny hole in the middle, say from 10 over n, minus 10 over n to 10 over n. And I want to know that what is the probability that this guy doesn't have any eigenvalue in it. So if you go back a few slides, uh, we know that if we have, well, from this application, if we have universality with respect to the vague sense then we have universality for the whole probability. In fact, we have universality for the occupational probability as well. Uh, but for the, sim for the Bernoulli model, we don't have the universality in the vague sense yet. We have universality in the average vague sense, but from that, uh, I don't know how to deduce uh, such, a, uh, such a corollary because when we averaging over the letter u, the range of u can be much longer than this interval. Right. And, then, and then we don't, I don't know how to zoom in in this short interval. Right. So we have this averaging here and then, then it run on a longer interval. Is Uh, there is the guy here. I think Zetuni usually knows such answer to that question, but I don't know. There's some trend probably list in the, oh, you, Barry. So yes or no, we have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> But at least we know what you know what I'm talking about, right? So <laughs> yeah. So um, that's sort of my favorite question. Actually, the second one to well, the one the first one is not new. Certainly, is the leftover of the meta conjecture, which is still uh, not established. The second one I liked uh, because it had uh, a long, a deep root uh, connecting to this very place. Actually, this the place I'm standing on here. Um, it, well, if you look at this gap, that measure the distance from the smallest eigenvalue to zero, which is something people in numerical analysis or linear algebra in general call the least singular value. And the problem of estimating the least singular value go back to Goldstein and von Neumann in the 1940s, when both were here and, and they are building the computer and the first task of the computer is to solve system of linear equation. And then, and the running time of, of such a problem solver depends very much on how small the least singular value is. That's how they raise this question. Now, also, technically, I have a feeling about this problem is that it may be solvable without going through the correlation function. Uh, the reason is that I know how to solve this problem in the 
non-symmetric case, namely in the IID model, uh, way before we do the four moment theorem and so on, by an absolutely different method, the geometric method, which has nothing to do with correlation function. So there's maybe a tiny chance here we can do this with a different, some chance here that we can do this with a different method, and maybe that different method will lead to solution of other problems. Yeah. But at least this is, doesn't seem that hard than the first one. Okay, so let me go slightly beyond the semicircle law. <coughs> Just to go back to that question you asked. Yes. Do you expect the answer to be n polymers per moving? No. No. Yes, as I said from the beginning. It should be the same. When we get Bernoulli, it should be the same for say Savia Gaussian everything with good tail decay. You will yeah. not see any distinction. No, no. I just say it because it's easy to say. Uh, yeah, so here's the, uh, something slightly beyond the semicircle law model uh, when we can talk about external source model with external source. So the model is that you take your usual random matrix and add to it a deterministic one, which is diagonal. So yeah, so in physics it's called external source model. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what is a source. <laughs> uh, uh, it was no the the nice thing here is that the global distribution has nothing to do with the semicircle anymore. Actually, so often the support is disconnected. It have very weird form. Uh, Blacher and um, can you, somebody tell me how to pronounce his name? Cow glass. S slowly. Cow glass. Cow glass. Okay. <laughs> uh, so they consider GUE plus the diagonal. When the diagonal actually simple. Yeah. Yeah. You, you just have to have two values, plus minus a, and with the same frequency. And, and they compute something very nice, because they show that the correlation function, well, after a proper normalization, also have the side kernel in it. So it say that, yes, yeah, so it, it, it's sort of surprising to me. This says that the local statistic is much more consistent than the global one, even when you lose the global one. The spectrum become disconnected. It's nothing to do with the semicircle. The the side kernel appear. So of course the question is that is it also some something universal here? Now we have some small evidence uh, with uh, Oruk, who was a, a postdoc of mine, uh, and uh, um, and we can prove this uh, with the convergence under the four moment matching assumption. There's also related work by Lee and Snelly. Snelly, uh, when they consider D to be a random, to be a random diagonal, but they they prove the local set, local law and the the localization and many results, which which also can be used probably can be used to prove universality. Uh, okay, so the actually the specific question here I want to ask is. Can you prove universal, universality at least for the Gauss divisible model? Right. So here the thing is that we have this, the Blaher et al. result. Do this for GUE plus D. So this we know. So my question is that can we do this if we take, uh, if we take some linear combination of arbitrary matrix plus GUE plus D. So basically, I'm asking for Johansson type result for this. And as far as I know, actually, right now, it's the only way to go from four moment to smaller moment, even. So in, I mentioned the result of, 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 uh, of Erdős Yao and Tao and me when we prove universality for Hermitian matrices without four moment, only two moment. But I think in the heart, it's still a four moment theorem. But then we, we know result of this type from Johansson and very strong result of Edwish and Yao when, when the portion of GUE is, is going to zero. Then, then, then we have a bigger class to match. And then the third and the fourth moment just go away. 
but, but this is the only way to go from down from two more four moment to, to smaller moment as, as I know now maybe there's better way that I am not aware of so, so here's a something that that maybe come out from explicit method because, uh, because that's the way Johansson did it for instance <coughs> So now let me go to something which is sort of a newer question, motivated by current development that uh, uh, we know. So here's the notion of local semicircle law, which was pushed forward in the series of paper of Edwish, Len, and Yao. So the semi local semicircle law is an observation of this type. You look at a short interval. And in that short interval i, here's the expectation of the number of, of eigenvalues. And you don't want that you don't want the real value to exceed the expectation by say some delta fraction. And we want to this to hold for O short interval i. So um, and yeah, so the key is that i is a local, is a local uh, um, local interval. It's very short compared to the whole spectrum. Uh, so the question I like to pose is that how local is this local law? Right? How short you can take this i? Now, if you take very, very short, uh, it's probably not true. Uh, yeah, so let me give the formal definition. So I, I, I say I define some threshold for this property, namely that the threshold is fn. If you look at if you look at any interval of line say thousand times f n, then you have the local law, and you look at interval of line f n divided by a thousand, then you don't have the law anymore. Okay. So this is just the the standard threshold the definition from uh, percolation theory or random graph theory that you usually see. Yeah, so as I said, it may not be true. Uh, for very short one, and here's the the evidence. There's a recent result of Benarus and Bogart, who proved that the biggest gap in the bulk is of order square root of log n over n. Actually, they proved much more. They proved uh, they even uh, they proved uh, they derived the distribution of the biggest gap as well. But at least it's uh, square root log n over n. So it's clearly that the threshold has to be more than this, because you have an interval of square root log n over n, which is no eigenvalue in it. <coughs> yeah, I, yeah, so for any interval of that length, not only the a fixed one. Yes. Uh, and uh, Rizzo from Erdős Land, yeah, our paper and many extra works or many following works in uni on universality uh, show that for now very large class of matrices, uh, um, um, we have an upper bar which is a power in log. So this C is usually not, well, it, it was never square root. Uh, it usually is something we don't really want to compute, but some basis is got computed. Uh, uh, so in the recent uh, paper with my student Wang, we can show it for Bernoulli, it's, it's only one look. Uh, uh, it's, it's make us uh, a little bit excited because it's, it's uh, just more a mile away from maybe the truth. So here I dare sort of to make a conjecture that actually the lower bound should be right. I don't have numerical evidence to support that. This is cannot <laughs> computing anything which is square root log n and make any sense. Uh, um, actually, I don't even know square that root square root of log n is. Yeah, no, no it's always three. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I am not even sure at this moment that it is no for the Gaussian case. But I, I, I didn't check that. OK, so the other questions I want to ask here is, uh, 
is there a direct way to prove that there's no long empty interval? Okay, so by long, I mean the following. Uh, so there is an interval between minus 2 and 2. Uh, that's a spectrum. So when we talk about universality, we look at interval of length 1 over n. Now I take a long, well, namely long, much longer than this, which is n epsilon over n. And if you look at proof at universality result, actually all we need, well, I think it's enough to know that in such interval, we have at least one eigenvalue. Now we don't know a direct way to do this. So the only way I know how to do this now is through the local universe, uh, the local law by, by address at all. So instead of proving directly there's one eigenvalue in here, we prove much stronger observation that not only there's one in here, there's as many as you expected. But maybe there's a short way that just prove there's one in there and then, and then you have a simpler proof of, of, of some universality result. And it's also something that, that may lead to some new idea that, uh, that I'd like to point out. Okay, so let me go to something more recent, uh, which, yeah, we have discussed universality for the Hermitian case. Let me go now to the IID case, when every entry is uh, independent and 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 now, now we know, uh, well, we know the circular law, and so most of the eigenvalues are complex. But to make things even worse, some of them are real as well. Uh, if we take an uh, IID matrix with real entries, uh, then there will be many eigen, real eigenvalues. How many? Uh, it was done by combining the uh, result of Edelman, Postlan, Soup, and Forrester, and Nagao. We know that with high probability, there will be square root of 2 over pi times square root n ring roots. Pretty precise. In the Gaussian case, of course. Okay? And now, be because of the prison of the real eigenvalues, when we talk about correlation function, it will be more complicated. We have to talk about correlation between real and real, real and complex, and complex and real. So that gives this. Uh, uh, definition when you have two parameters here, k and l, and then we have k real point and z complex point, and then we have to define the, the correlation function with respect to these uh, parameters. And the explicit formula, um, well, there are many works to compute it for the Gaussian case. They look very bad. <laughs> well, they, they are explicit, but uh, they are very complicated. Uh, even I, I remember there are cases when n even and n odd gave different answer, which is uh, <laughs> now why this uh, problem is the new problem and, uh, and cannot be handled by existing method, uh, at least not straightforwardly. Uh, the reason is that this, I, this model is very sensitive to perturbation. So if you know the method that Erdős et al. and Erdős Yao and Tao and me do, we all, base, we all use the, the insensitivity of the Hermitian model in some way. So uh, what I do with Tao is that I have my matrix. And then, in one step, I will start slightly perturbed it by taking these eigenvalues out, um, taking these entries out and replace it by a Gaussian one. And I do it n square time, and then at the end, I will get uh, a Gaussian model. Uh, and because the perturbation doesn't Significant, significantly change the parameter I am interested in, I, I can do that. Uh, in the Erdős Yao approach, uh, they do it all in one step, actually. And so they just add a small random Gaussian noise to everything. Oh, 
elements at once. And this thing is also small, it's n to the sum power, negative power. And then, and then one show that they show that the two models are also uh, universal. And then from here, you can go to the Gaussian in the next step. Um, um, the problem with the problem with the IID case is nothing like that. It's true. So in the non emission case, there's the following well, no example that you have a matrix like this. Now here all the eigenvalues are zero. And if I slightly perturbate this by say putting one over n to the hundred here, then you see that the characteristic polynomial of this guy is lambda to the n minus one over n to the hundred. So actually, all the eigenvalues are very close to the unit circle. Also have a uniform distribution. So it, it requires some new method, which we call the universality via sampling. I wish I had time to talk more about it, but probably not. Um, and this proved the universality for correlation function with four-moment matching assumptions. Yeah, it's different, but in general, we don't know but good perturbation result for. Yeah, but you mentioned the elliptic law, which is a perturbation, and it's very smooth. Correlation is also the local correlation is not the same. The elliptic Geneva ensemble is a perturbation of the Geneva. Yes, but we don't start from the Gaussian one, we start from an arbitrary one. Okay. Right? So, yeah. that we don't know anything. So if we just work with the Gaussian, then everything is fine. I agree. But we have to connect it to some other models as well. <laughs> yeah. So this, uh, this new approach uh, this new approach is sort of different from the old one. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, we don't need things like delocalization anymore. Uh, um, and it also works for some other processes, but uh, probably i talk about that some other time. Uh, so given this, what question is, of course, what about the Bernoulli one again? Again, Bernoulli is just an example uh, because we want to get away from the four moments. We just want to say three moments or two moments. So this is the first example. Talk. Uh, now this seems hard. So again, let me motivate you by easier problem. Well, easier in the sense that they are less. Uh, complicated maybe. Oh wait, so let me also mention there are some evidence. Uh, um, well, there are some sort of evidence that such uh, questions should have affirmative answer. There's something called local circular law, which is a correspondent <coughs> of the uh, local semicircle law. Now this one whole under weaker assumptions, so we don't need four moments, we just need two moments. It thanks to a uh, work series of work air, Dwe Xiao, and Yin, and Yin. Oh, Bouguet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought that your, your network of quota is uh, have high complexity, but yeah, uh, sorry, but yeah, it's Bouguet. Uh, um, yeah, so, so it is sort of a pointing out to the good direction, but still technically still hard because even for the semicircle law, we, we also know it under very weak assumption, but still there are things we don't understand. Uh, so the questions here, the easier question, or maybe the, the friendlier question I want to ask is, uh, at least can you say something about the real roots? Right? Which is something you can even handle without knowing, you know, uh, undergrad student understand this question without knowing through the correlation function. Right? Yeah, but you can say that, okay, but square root 2 over pi, this should come from somewhere. If you don't know a deep theory, that's probably S hard as the first one. So let me give an even better motivation. So what about two? 
I give you a plus minus one matrix. Prove that it had at least two real roots. Now this one undergrad is still didn't have to. <laughs> All right, so, okay. So let me now in the last two problem set, I like to connect to, to talks that uh, was earlier talks uh, from the conference. So one on the universality of eigenvectors, which uh, of course probably was mentioned in the talk of Paul Bogart. So the general thing we expect here is that we look at the eigenvector of random matrix, it should behave like a random vector from the unit sphere. It is very hard to argue why not. Uh, and, uh, and for instance, there are lot of results from delocalization which show that indeed the spectral norm, I'm sorry, the infinity norm of a random eigenvectors is very close to 1 over square root n. It's just a local way. Um, <coughs> um, and for the purpose of application, this is all we need. But let us get closer to the truth. Uh, the random vector from the unit sphere actually have norm square root log n over n. We know that. And we can prove it for the Bernoulli model and some other model, but in general it's still open. Uh, so let me make a conjecture here that is square root log n over n. It should be true for, say, O sub Gaussian matrices symmetric uh, or Hermitian matrices with sub-Gaussian entries. Actually, I do a numerical experiment and that even suggests that the distribution of this infinity norm is universal. I take a random vector, a random unit uh, vector, and I take a random eigenvector. I look at the largest coefficient. They have the same distribution. And uh, there's of course recent work on the known Hermitian matrices from the Bogart talk. Uh, uh, and we can also raise this question for those results on those results as well. Okay, so uh, let me now connect to the talk yesterday by Dutz uh, by talking about central limit theorems a little bit. Uh, so here's the result um, which prove a central limit theorem of the determinant uh, by Delaney and Lacker in 2000. So you take, the, you take the determinant, take the absolute value, take the log and properly normalize, then it go to the limiting distribution is normal. Uh, and GUE and GOE require different normalization. Uh, so this guy, a physicist, I never met them. <laughs> I never understood the paper, but this, uh, the theorem is clear. It's, the paper is amazing. It, it, they, they go from the joy distribution of O eigenvalues, which we know from well, Ginebra, and, uh, and they derive this from the joy distribution of the eigenvalue, which is still beyond my comprehension. I have a different proof, which at least you see some of something when you can. Uh, expect the central limit theorem, but, uh, but the first proof is purely computational. Okay, so Terry and I can prove the universality of this under the four moment assumption again. And so the question is that, yeah, but four moment assumption again exclude, exclude the Bernoulli matrix, which only match up to three moment. So we don't know for this. Well, we do know in the non-symmetric case, if you look at IID matrices, then, then we don't need four moments. We need only two moments. That's enough. Uh, but this one is open. Now, if you look at the log of determinant of the sum of the log lambda i, when lambda i is the eigenvalue, so this is a linear statistic that yesterday we talked about. Uh, and so I wonder, and, and we have, yesterday we heard a very general central limit theorem for linear statistics, but the function is not the log function. So I wonder if there is the more general theorem that sort of uh, 
capture all this uh, phenomenon and including the the log function and maybe that way we can we can forget about the four moment assumption and get a more general result let me end here uh, thank you very much